Welcome back to Online Darts, everyone. We're here in Amsterdam, but we've got five minutes, so we're catching up with Dan Dawson. Dan, after two long years, the World Series has returned. Finals here, but it hasn't disappointed, has it? No, I don't think so. I think it's been it's been good to get the full World Series back. It means the World Series finals actually is the result of a full tour, not like when we had the World Series finals after one event, which didn't really make a great deal of sense. Um, so, yeah, it, it's been good. It's been interesting. I don't think we've found anybody right now who you think they could be the next Damon Hetter that's been found in the World Series. But you didn't. You wouldn't have said that when Damon Hetter first turned up, do you? I think there's still like signs of progress from people like Hopi. Hopi's given a decent account of himself. And there's a couple of the young Aussies who you think maybe they could they could do something um, if given a bit of time. Um, but yeah, it's just been it's been good to see like a proper World Series tour get up and running again. The highlight for me has to be Madison Square Garden, um, mm. and finally that Still Tip Dart seemed to have made a, a little splash in the in the big country of America because it's predominantly soft tip. But this year it was nice to see locals to New York come in. And it wasn't travelling um, Brits and things like that like it was in Vegas, and a real splash for American darts. Yeah, I mean they certainly put a lot of effort into it. They got the full gun, didn't they? And I, I think it's paid off. It's difficult to gauge really. The fan, the crowds were good. Got their own tifos. Like and look, that's that's actually better than some of that. They put more effort in than some of the British and European crowds. A fair play to the Yanks for it. Um, it was it's a great venue and everything. It's got prestige, but while it's a, as a success, it looks like a success as a one-off tournament. I'm sure there's people with far greater insight than I as to how much impact that's actually made. What parts of American society that's getting to. It was on the telly, obviously. There, there's plenty of media interest around it. But I imagine if you walk around New York and said, yeah, the darts is on, uh, then most people would be like, what, the, what, what are you talking about? Um, it's, there's a long way to go. It's, it's a very, very difficult market to crack. But hopefully that's a step forward. The World Series is so important for the development of the sport globally. And I think we appreciate that more now than ever, not having it for the last two years. But what's the next development and the next stage of the World Series, in your opinion? <laughs> question um i mean it's difficult isn't it look we had a, we had a dutch event uh, just over the road um earlier on this year now the netherlands is developed great tournament um we've had them in germany in the past again good tournament how much developing does it need i, I, I there'll be decisions that are made on where we go and what we do and there's so many different factors um, that go into these decisions, and I've got no, I haven't got the answers. I don't make them, um, but I, I really think the proof of the pudding's in, in the eating. If you get a Damon Hetter that comes through, and you get an elite level player, everything about the PDC is about creating elite level players, superstars of the sport that people will pay their hard earned to watch or watch on the telly. The World Series has helped find some. I mean, we had Corey Cadby; he's gone wherever. Um, but Damon Hetter is is another one. Um, that's what they're there for. It it helps because you're growing the game, and you need to have a certain baseline of interest in the game to get those superstars. But ultimately, the PDC is about where's where's our next Michael Van Gerwen coming from. And so we don't know where that's going to turn up. If we get an American one, we get a Canadian one, we get an Australian or New Zealand one or, or wherever else we happen to go, that's the end goal. And you can only really judge that a little bit further down the line. It takes a lot of hard work and investment. And then hopefully five years down the line, something comes of that. But it also helps in getting it on the telly and growing interest in the game as well. So I, I genuinely don't know. It's a, I mean, it's a hard question. It's a long-term strategic view. Um, so... I don't have an answer, Phil. Sorry. That makes a change. Um, Barry has spoken, and there have been many other pundits in the world spoken about these World Series events, and maybe there's too many because there's a gap in the calendar where other people aren't playing, and then Barry has spoken about taking ranking events to these territories. Where do you stand on, is it too much of a break, and how far off are we from maybe having ranking events in Australia and America? I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's... If you do a ranking event in Australia, America, are you then asking what? Let's say it's a Euro Tour type thing, 48 players go in there. If it's a Pro Tour type thing, 128 players go in there. What people don't realise is it's like, yeah, let's go, and, let's go and do some <laughs> ranking events in Australia, that'd be nice. You've then got to find a venue that can do it in an area where you can put up, say, 200, 250 people, more than that, in hotels that they can afford, 
and it's you're not going to go there for a weekend. You've got to put a big old chunk there. Are people going to do it? Is, is it worth it? Is if let's say Ryan Joyce is here this weekend, is it worth blokes just inside the top forty going all the way to Australia to play three pro tour events? It doesn't seem like that would be sensible. Um, I don't. I don't know. I, it's difficult. There's only unless, until Barry creates hernuary and there's an extra <laughs> month where you can just chuck in more events. It's difficult to manage the calendar, but at the same time, Luke, uh, Luke Woodhouse um, played the Euro Tour the other day. He's not playing for five weeks because he's not in the last two Euro Tours. He's not in this, obviously. If you're at that level, you want these opportunities. So the players who are going, oh, there's too much stuff. It's really hard. Aren't you? People are giving me so many opportunities to play darts and win loads of money. And he's like, take some time off. Skip an event or two. You're in everything. You're in the Premier League and the World Series and all that sort of stuff. You are playing a lot of darts. You don't want to play all of it. But you need these opportunities because players who aren't in the top 10, aren't in the Premier League and the World Series, need to have that opportunity to play, improve, give themselves a platform, Mark Webster's word, always always need a platform, to get, you know, establish themselves in the world of darts and earn money and make it work. I don't know financially how, at the minute, how you would make it work. Darts ain't golf. You, you can't just go, we'll all go for a little jolly to the other side of the world because there's so much money and so much cash sloshing around from sponsors and everything else that it doesn't matter if I go there and don't win a game. It doesn't matter if I lose out on three grand because I win one game and I've covered my costs. It's not happening at the minute. Um, can we get to that point? I don't know. Uh, but it seems, it seems a difficult one to, to sort out to me. Away from the World Series, your other favourite thing in the world of darts, the Euro Tour, has had a complete season and I know that you're excited, 13 events, a couple more to go. How important is the Euro Tour and how good is it to be seeing it back in its form? We've un seen new areas, new territories we're going into. It's exciting times on the Euro Tour. Yeah, I mean, I'm really looking forward to Belgium. Belgium's gone mad for darts. Uh, you go to, I think, I can't remember if it's Antwerp or Brussels, but they've gone so mad for it. There is a, an enormous billboard the size of Vincent Camphouse with Dimi and Kim Hybrex centre of town. It's all over the telly. Dimitri, his uh, success has just completely transformed the sport in that country. They're going mad for it. I'm really interested to see. I think they're sold out for pretty much the entire weekend. And you compare that to when we went to Belgium on the European Championship for in Hasselt, yeah. where, you know, we got 1,500, maybe 2,000 for the, for the best session. I think things are changing in Belgium. It's exciting. We've had new venues. Trier was really, really good. Um, we've, we've had it's the best tour in professional sport. You know this, Phil. Everybody who knows darts knows this. It has been great having it back. I think you're going to see some very, very exciting news about the European tour next year. I can't see anything. <laughs> but there's you can you only have to look at the the way it's produced. The the Dutch lads, Key Town, who produce it, they're they're yeah, they're the future. Look, you know from the Modus stuff. It's that it's that same system that they've you you don't if you've got the right director and the right spotter, you don't miss darts. Um, but everything about it is getting better and better and better. And in terms of that's that's from the sort of nerdy production side of things. In terms of the darts, people are talking about Luke Humphreys being a world champion, being a multiple major champion, being one of the best players in the world right now. The only reason they're doing that, or the main reason they're doing that, is because of the European tour because he's going on stage in front of thousands of fans and he's playing world-class darts and smashing people up and he's won four of those titles. It is the place where the next big winners are found and where they're going to go and prove themselves that they can be the major champions that we think they're going to be. One negative around the Euro Tour, and you may know if something's coming, you may not, or have you got an opinion on it, is the situation about pullouts and, and buys mm -hmm. splits a lot of people on social media, like the one just gone, there was four pullouts, so there was short sessions on, on the Friday. It, do you know, if there is there anything coming in to sort that, or if not, do you, have you got a thing that you do to, to get that right, to stop it happening, or, or fill the gaps when the players do pull out? Right, for a start, yeah, four pullouts, six games on the Friday afternoon, six games on the Friday evening. Short change of fans. Short change of fans. They bought their ticket, they wanted eight games, they were promised eight games, they didn't get eight games. They've been shortchanged. The networks that have been showing it, whether it's DAZN or Sport One and PDC TV, they deserve to have a full day of action. That can't happen. So, as I understand it, massive fines will be one of the things that will come in. But I think they'll also, it's a carrot and a stick. We'll say, well, you can win more money on the European tour, so it's even more worth turning up. Although, why, you know, 
it, it, there's big money anyway. If you're a seeded player, turn up, win one game on the Saturday and four on the Sunday, it's 25 grand in your hand. Um, but the carrot will get even be bigger and the stick will also get even bigger. But there are, there are you know, technical things that maybe they can do. I mean, it's all about that busy calendar which we've already mentioned. If you're going to have host nation qualifiers, you used to have them the night before. They clump them together now because, not just because it's easier and cheaper, but it means more players are going to turn up and, and play them and you can get a better standard of qualifier coming through. It's going to be difficult. Maybe they can have some kind of standby list. I don't know. I've, I've talked with the PDPA. They've had various suggestions for how you can do it. I'm not sure which ones they're going to go with, but more money into it, bigger fines if they don't, and just explain to players, look, we understand you're busy. If you've just spent three weeks or four weeks in Australia and New Zealand, if you've been playing Premier League all year, you're not going to want to play anything. Peter Wright says he's not going to play Euro Tour if he's in the Premier League next year, while the Premier League is on. Perfectly understandable. I get it. Do that. It's sensible. You're playing a lot of darts. You need to keep yourself fit and healthy and fresh. Um, but then just don't enter them. Say that three weeks before and go, I'm going to have that weekend off. Yeah. Manage your calendar. Don't shortchange the fans. I think that's the easiest way, but I'm sure they'll have some technical and structural things they can do as well. Dan, absolute pleasure talking to you. Before you go, who would you fancy today? Dirk, all day. Uh, Dirk, I mean, look, I keep saying Dirk because he's the most excited player in the world. Uh, you, lis you listen to the reaction to the Dutch fans. He, there's a bigger cheer for Dirk van Dijvenbode in the Netherlands, even for them for Michael van Gerwen. They absolutely love him. And you get it. He's more 180s than anybody, more 170s than anybody. He's mad um, and he's interesting. And I think he's, he's bound to win something on stage, whether it's a Euro Tour or something like this at some point. Dan Dawson, absolute pleasure, mate. No worries, Phil.